When it comes to making buildings more efficient, the big end of town is doing quite well. Some of the bigger buildings in Australia are actually amongst some of the world's best performers. But what about the buildings that are not too big and not too small? In Victoria alone, there are about 2,700 of these mid-tier buildings. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but there are 400,000 Victorians that work in those buildings every day. As we'll see in this case study, upgrading those buildings makes a lot of commercial sense and can save money for both building owners and tenants. To find out more, I met up with the No More Average Building Scheme here in Sydney, but we start this report at Bank Australia in Melbourne. At the Bank Australia headquarters here in Melbourne, you're in what's called a mid-tier building. Why did you decide to improve the efficiency of this building? There have been three key drivers behind why we undertook energy efficiency works here at head office. The first was that we wanted to improve our environmental footprint. We've got a really strong mandate from our customers to act on climate change. This building is really old and we recognise that there was plenty of opportunity to improve energy efficiency and reduce our carbon emissions. Secondly, we wanted to save money. We're a customer owned bank and our customers expect that we run an efficient business and reducing our electricity and gas costs is one way that we can, we can save money. Finally, we wanted to improve the indoor working environment for our staff. We've had ongoing issues with our indoor temperature control, so that was another driving reason behind doing our energy efficiency works. What improvements did you undertake and, and where were your biggest savings? Well, we've already seen a reduction in our electricity and gas consumption to date, and a large part of that was an improvement in the efficiency of our air conditioning system, where we've seen a 30 to 40 percent cost saving. The bulk of the work was involved an upgrade of our heating, cooling and ventilation system. It was identified that these two systems were actually working simultaneously and in effect cancelling each other out, which is obviously very inefficient. Uh, and we also identified that there was a leak in the, an air leak in the uh, air conditioning system, which was reducing the efficiency of the system by about 30 to 40 per cent. With these efficiency changes, you've obviously saved money, but what other benefits have you realised from these changes? We've also seen an improvement in the thermal comfort for our staff. We've experienced over the years many inconsistencies and variations in the temperature across the building. For example, we recorded before the works on the same floor, 32 degrees in one area and 19 degrees in an area only 15 metres away. So this was a problem and our staff were complaining about the indoor uh, temperatures within the building, so we wanted to do something about it. Since the works have been done, we've already seen an improvement in the air quality for staff within the building. Monitoring indicates that the, the temperature variations are operating within a, a narrower range, so it's been a really good result for us so far. Paul, your company Energy Action helped to assess and implement the changes in this building. What were the key things here that needed improving? The work we did for this project was undertaken as part of the Energy Efficient Office Buildings Program for Sustainability Victoria. And that's focused on improving the existing buildings with existing systems. So one of the first focuses for us was the control system. Control system for this building was essentially invisible. Nobody could see what was going on other than the controls technician. The second problem that we looked at in this building was that the air handling system that moves the air around the building was constant volume. So it was pushing around a lot of air that it didn't need for a lot of the year. Thirdly, and probably most importantly for this building, there were issues of maintenance. Quite a few of the uh, actuators that operate the heating and cooling valves were broken, which means we were not getting the heating and cooling where we wanted it. The economy cycle damper, which controls the amount of outside air in the building, was jammed open. So we were running 100% outside air through the building. And finally, as Nikki mentioned, there was the duct leakage problem, which meant that 30 or 40% of the air that we were pushing out of the plant room wasn't actually getting to the occupied space. For building owners watching now, what kind of financial savings can be gained by improving the performance of their buildings? For simple adjustments of air conditioning systems, it's easy to talk about a 30 to 40% saving on a three to four year payback. Um, outside the air conditioning system, for lighting, depending on your lighting system, savings can be 50 to 80% for an LED upgrade, for instance. For the building owner who hasn't heard of this kind of thing, maybe they're looking at this for the first time, what are the other bottom line drivers to make these kind of changes? The key other driver is tenant comfort. If you can make your tenants more comfortable, they're more likely to renew their leases, they're more likely to take longer leases. All of that contributes to better returns for your buildings, which improves the building's value. 
The push to improve the performance of office buildings is not unique to Victoria. Here in New South Wales, I met up with the No More Average Buildings campaign to find out more about their push to improve the performance of office buildings. The aim of the campaign is helping building owners of buildings with very high energy bills or buildings that are not very efficient to find out why the buildings are not operating as well as they could, what are the key opportunities to improve and also what financial options are available to them to improve those buildings and get them to a better place. You've done a lot of research on building performance. Uh, what have you found out that building owners need to be aware of? I think the key finding is that energy efficiency is easier than a lot of people think. Uh, many people think that you need major capital investment or you need major disruption to the office space to do it. The reality is there are many things you can do that do not require either of those. Two examples are one, building optimization, which is basically taking all the components in a building, all the equipment, and getting it to work and talk to each other in the way they should. And just by doing that, we see many buildings reducing consumption by 10 or 15%. There's also a really simple thing, like turning off the lights when, you, when you're at home, which is turning all the equipment off when there's no one at night, and there's no one on the weekends. And just doing that, we see many buildings reducing between five and 10%. So there are very simple things, and that's the key message. Many, many th simple things that do not require major finance or disruption, and that could significantly improve your building. In your opinion, what financial benefit do building owners get when they participate in this push? I think cost savings are a great place to start this discussion. Buildings with high neighbours ratings have much lower energy costs, and I think that's something that a lot of people do understand. What many people do not understand, though, is that buildings that have low energy ratings find it much harder to find tenants to, to go into their buildings. This is partly because major corporations and the Australian government and all the state governments who are the major renters of office space would not rent your building if it's lower than 4.5 stars. So if you are willing to invest in energy efficiency, you're likely to get new clients and new tenants. If you're not willing to invest in energy efficiency, you risk significant vacancies in your building. A vacancy can cost a lot more than the entire power bill in a building. So I really encourage people to participate and invest. And what's the benefit to tenants when building owners get on board? The benefits are, in terms of financials, are very clear. A high neighbours energy rating means lower energy costs for tenants as well, not just for the building owner. What action should mid-tier building owners be taking here in New South Wales and across Australia? I think the first step would be, if you haven't done a neighbours energy rating, get a rating and find out how efficient your office is operating. If you fall in the bracket between one to three stars, is not all bad news. There are good news and the good news is you have many energy efficiency opportunities that are at very low cost. Many of them require no disruption to the office uh, and that's fantastic news. I think the second point that I would take is contact your state department. Uh, all state departments have many energy efficiency programs that are there to help you out. Uh, and if you're in New South Wales in particular, just go and Google no more average buildings. That's going to take you to a website that has all the information you need to participate. It's a lot of resources, financial, technical, and also one of the best energy efficiency teams uh, in the country to help you out. As you just saw, improving the performance of a mid-tier building makes a lot of sense for building owners and their tenants. On seeing what companies have done in this space, I found three key benefits that building owners get from upgrading their buildings. First up, when you upgrade your building, you make it more energy efficient. That leads to lower energy bills for you and your tenants. Secondly, improved thermal comfort in a building leads to happier and more productive tenants. That can lead to longer leases, which can also lead to improved building values. Finally, a good way to measure the efficiency of your building is to have it neighbours rated. That will show potential tenants how energy efficient your building is. Now, as an update to that case study, at the moment, you only have to have a neighbours energy rating if your building is over 2,000 square metres in size. However, from July the 1st next year, mid-tier office buildings that are larger than 1,000 square metres will have to be audited for a neighbour's office NG rating. That rating will have to be disclosed in any advertising for that building. That's something that's going to affect a lot of mid-tier building owners. Smart Money's case studies have been developed with assistance from the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage and Sustainability Victoria.